for DOSH, you know, what does it mean, so on and so forth. You can get access to the uh, to, uh, internet in using this link. So, um, Change is the co-founders of uh, DOSH, uh, New Zealand's first digital wallet. Uh, and Shane has deep experience in uh, financial services covering New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, and UK markets. Right, his roles has ranged from um, product management and uh, project leadership uh, to frontline sales to uh, relationship management responsibility. Um, through this time, uh, he has developed a detailed understanding of the roles of technology and digital innovations uh, plays in, in, in transforming markets. So Shane has a practical experience in payments, uh, blockchain, uh, cryptocurrency, and fintechs, right? And have led this uh, stream of work at major organizations. And uh, we proudly, uh, proudly present uh, Shane to all of you today. And uh, Shane, uh, over to you. You can share your screen. Just, right. Just, yep. yep. Yeah. Thank, no, thanks so much for the uh, the, the, the great introduction and. Um, welcome everybody. Um, uh, firstly, congratulations on finding your way to fintech. For starters, uh, fintech is one of the most exciting, fast-growing industries uh, in the world. And uh, so, with all the different paths you've had to choose, I suppose over the last few years, uh, finding your way into fintech, I think, is a, is a really good choice. Um, Today, we are going to cover a number of topics. We'll talk about uh, why fintech was important, some of the current developments, emerging uh, trends that we're seeing in fintech, uh, some of the skills you, you would need to, to work in fintech, uh, and then look at fintech in New Zealand and particularly at DOSH, which is the uh, digital wallet that uh, I have co-founded launching last year uh, in New Zealand. Uh, and at the end, there's an opportunity for you to get involved as well. So hang in there till the end. Um, exciting opportunity where perhaps you can get a little bit closer to uh, a fintech and get a lot of learning through through doing so. Uh, so what is fintech? It has a few different definitions. So I'll just just so we're all kind of starting from the same point. Uh, six categories that we'll include today. So payments, alternative lending, banking, wealth. Uh, insurance and uh, capital markets. Uh, as, as, as some definitions have other segments in there, but those are the ones that we'll include uh, when we're talking about fintech today. Um, so, so why fintech? Well, as I mentioned, fintech is one of the uh, largest growth uh, sectors uh, in the world. Uh, so I'll give you some stats that would support that. In 2020, uh, 2021, it was the biggest ever year for venture capitalist uh, investment globally, 621 billion US dollars was invested via venture capitalism, of which 132 billion went into fintech. And of that 132 billion, 63% went into early stage fintech. So fintechs that are starting or, or perhaps at seed or, or, or series A stages. So what that means is that one in every five dollars that was invested globally was invested in fintech. So that's that puts fintech far above any other segment in the world uh, for venture capitalist investment last year. And it's a 169 percent increase on the prior year. In addition to that, there's now 206 fintech unicorns a unicorn being a company that started and is now worth more than uh, a billion US dollars. Uh, so that's, and 43 of those have, have, have uh, become unicorns in the last year. So it really is a space of immense investment, rapid growth, and a lot of technology change and a lot of um, uh, influence in the market as to where money is invested and outcomes that are delivered as well. So why? Why why is fintech the greatest segment uh, in the world at the moment? Well, there's, there's three big trends that have happened in the last ten, five to ten years that have driven this outcome. The first is smartphone saturation. 
I won't talk about that too much. You've all got a smartphone. Everyone's got them. And it's the, that technology in people's hands that has really enabled uh, the technology to move into the, the digital, mobile digital realm. The second is more complex. So open banking. Open banking is a term you'll, you'll start to hear quite a lot more of in the next year or two in New Zealand. But effectively, it's been uh, moving around the world for, for a number of years. Uh, starting in Europe, when uh, after a number of years of post GFC kind of bad bank behaviour, they decided that the governments decided that they needed to remove the barriers to entry for com competitors into the financial services sector, and so they effectively created open banking, which allows uh, the sharing of customer data um, and the potential sharing of. Uh, wholesale systems controlled by the large banks uh, and the reduction in some of the, the regulations that would be required to operate in the fintech and uh, the finance industry, all with the purpose of more startups coming in and creating competition in the market, um, which would provide better outcomes for consumers um, and, the and the market in general, both in terms of pricing, um, but also in terms of new innovative solutions uh, for for consumers, that's rolled across the world. Uh, Australia has a form of um, open banking. New Zealand's at its early stages of open banking, and as that begins to roll through with the adoption of new consumer data rights and APIs in the coming years, you'll see that New Zealand will really begin to heat up in terms of fintech um, development. Uh, the the third uh, major trend that's happened has been the development of real-time payment networks. So a real-time payment network is um, often a government-led uh, initiative that requires all the, the banks to create a platform where people can pay each other real-time, instantly, 24 by 7. Australia, there's 46 countries around the world that have real-time payment networks, New Zealand is not one of them. And New Zealand's real-time payment network is uh, currently on track to be delivered in 2030, so still some way away. Um, Australia has a real-time payment network called NPP, um, and NPP has uh, been in place for about four years, and it's been a springboard for lots and lots of different um, new innovation in that market, and Australia's really leapt forward in terms of its um, its fintech offering, particularly as it pertains to payments and, and banking. And above all of this, in the last couple of years, has been COVID, which has really increased digitisation um, and brought a lot of business online. So it's really put a, a, a lot of heat under the um, development and innovation. So those are, the, those are the big trends that we've seen in the last um, kind of five years that have led us to where we are today. But I thought I'd look at some, some current developments um, and some of the trends we might see moving forward as well that sit in around this and actually really have, have given rise to a number of different businesses and business models. Uh, so five, five key trends to talk through. Um, the first is, is crypto and digital, digital currencies. Now, actually, as I kind of walk through these, these are big topics. I mean, I see, I see you've got courses dedicated to these topics in their entirety. So I'm giving you the 30-second the, the version in each one, but hopefully it's enough to kind of pique your interest and you can dive into these as we get into real, you get into real detail as part of your, your studies. Um, but uh, the, the rise of crypto and digital currencies, uh, starting with blockchain, uh, starting with Bitcoin, um, which also introduced blockchain, um, enabled, which is the, the platform effectively that, that Bitcoin runs on, um, and then a, a flurry of other um, coins raised through initial coin offerings, Ethereum, um, and many more. Um, not necessarily related to financial institutions or governments um, and have become their own asset class, um, ad increasingly adopted by uh, financial institutions, um, and you're really seeing in the last year or so, um, you know, widespread adoption of crypto, um, which is you're really going to set that up to be a, a big topic going forward. The governments aren't necessarily comfortable with it um, because ultimately, who controls local local currencies? Governments and reserve banks. So governments and reserve banks they want to control 
the currencies and so are doing work around central bank digital currencies. And uh, the Reserve Bank is no different than that. There's currently a, uh, a paper out by them at the moment, which you would encourage you to read. And that is really kind of setting up what does central bank digital currency look like in New Zealand going forward. The second topic, not particular, not necessarily purely finance, but um, the, the application of blockchain. Um, so blockchain is a topic that I got in two, four or five years ago. It was very early in, in this stage, um, basically a platform of a distributed ledger, which um, is immutable. You can't, you can't change by blocks. And so it helps with topics such as provenance. Where has this salmon come from? We can track it back to the salmon farm that it, that it was, that it came from. Um, and, and it should confirm that something is, is true because of the, the, the history and the blocks um, confirm that it is. Initially really discussed as a remover of intermediaries, such as banks, insurance companies, et cetera. And it was always kind of interesting to me is where would this amazing new technology lead us? What I didn't really pick was NFTs and um, bunnies and um, warrens and all these other interesting things that have taken the market by storm in the last six months or so. Um, but using those same, same kind of topics and those same um, blockchain rules, around prominence and immutability. So um, at some stage, you know, the, the blockchain will really play heavily into the finance space as well. Topic three, buy now, pay later. You've all seen it. Um, Afterpay, uh, lay-by, zip, Genoa pay. You go into any type of payment gateway now, and the list is significant in terms of different type of payment options that you have. But what that's all effectively doing is um, – changing the historical norm of uh, credit cards as the primary credit option tool for making payments and providing an alternative, um, which has been extremely popular. A um, number of companies in, in, in a small market like New Zealand um, in that space likely to lead to some sort of consolidation, but it does really highlight that when new, when new structures come into fintech, um, via fintech, um, the change in the market from what has been an accepted norm for decades can very quickly change. And that's what we're seeing you know, with the, the advent of new technologies is the rapid change and rapid adoption of new, te new technologies. Um, fourth uh, trend, um, who doesn't want to be a fintech? Well, FAMGA, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, Google, uh, Amazon, Apple and Amazon, um, perhaps it needs to be re redone now, it's, uh, Facebook's changed their name, but um, have all entered the market. So once the realm of big banks and financial inst institutions, other players, big organisations are now entering the market with um, the, the reduction in, in barriers to entry and are looking to play and grab a greater slice of the financial services market. Um, and those are the, the big players that are pushing changes around the world. Um, so expect to see a lot from them. And then lastly, but not leastly, uh, digital wallets, um, which I'll talk to in, in some length um, when, when I get to, to talking about DOSH. But the option of being able to actually hold money and make payments in a really easy, social, um, instant way without it being directly through a bank. So today it's, I have an account. It's with a bank. I use banking systems to move money. Around the rest of the world, and until DOSH was launched last year, most um, people are now moving to digital wallets to do those activities. And in fact, in other countries around the world, between 10 and 70% of all e-commerce payments are made using a, a digital wallet. So New Zealand is actually one of the last countries in the world to, to really move um, to adopting, adopting digital wallets. Um, very briefly, skills needed to, um, to, to work in fintech. Look, hard skills, um, a lot of them, again, were on your list of courses. Um, finance, I've got an, I'm, a, I'm a chartered accountant, so I've got a financial background. Uh, obviously, tech, um, but also very much um, marketing um, and also compliance. So compliance is huge in, in um, fintech. Um, in order to be able to operate, you need to meet the, uh, the regulations. New Zealand's actually very regulatory light. 
compared to a lot of other markets, that will change in time, particularly as organisations such as DOSH grow and, and you know, we'll, we'll need to be, um, there'll be you know, views around um, providing greater licensing for such activities. But, um, you know, getting a, a good grasp of regulation is, um, is important. In terms of some of the soft skills, um, equally important um, uh, in fintechs, you know, very fast moving environments, lots of ambiguity, lots of change, um, and often new organizations that are growing rapidly. If, if you're looking for a job where you want to sit in a more comfortable area and and um, have a lot of consistency and a, and a corporate oversight, then you, know, you might want to think about whether fintech's for you, but if you're someone who really likes to move with the, with the speed of technology and, and, and adoption, then absolutely fintech is, um, it would be a good space for you. Um, last topic for myself, uh, fintech in New Zealand. Um, so perhaps just before we get to fintech in New Zealand is, is the financial institution space, uh, financial services space uh, in New Zealand. An $18 billion industry grows at about 7% compound annual growth rate per year over the last five years. Um, a third of that is, uh, or more than a third, is um, banking in terms of the, the, the profit, about $6 billion in banking profit, which is almost entirely dominated by four players. So that's the four banks, ANZ, BNZ, ASB, and Westpac, who are four Australian-owned organisations. It's not always well known in New Zealand that actually New Zealand's top four banks are all Australian banks, um, and their headquarters are, um, are in either Sydney uh, or Melbourne. And I've come from one of those those banks before I went into, into FinTech, so I know that space really well. Fifth Bank and Kiwi Bank, which is New Zealand's attempt to have our player at the table um, of banking in, in New Zealand. Um, doing a pretty good job trying to trying to fly the Kiwi flag. Um, in terms of fintech in New Zealand, that's very nascent. So it's very early. There's not a lot of players. Uh, open banking hasn't arrived. There's not a lot of bank APIs in order to be able to build your your business. But when I was in Singapore up until pre-COVID, um, I was really enjoying using the the, the, the digital wallets there, the payment apps that enabled us to move money so seamlessly between ourselves without bank account numbers and without waiting for money to arrive, with notifications to tell you money's here, money's there, et cetera. It, it became becomes very seamless and easy. Going buying a coffee, rounding up the price and using that, that additional spend being used to buy a Google share. It's really quite advanced in terms of what you can do um, in Singapore, but also around the rest of the world. So when returning to New Zealand, uh, primarily because of COVID, decided to start DOSH with a, my co-founder, um, who was also in Singapore returning at the time. And um, I'll just share some screens, um, tell you a little bit about DOSH. Um, hopefully, where's the share button? Down here somewhere. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going to move this. Here we go. Hopefully everyone can see that. Um, so introducing um, DOSH. So returned to New Zealand, um, left my, my my banking role for a, a, a number of years and uh, started DOSH, New Zealand's first digital wallet. So as I mentioned, it's, um, it's an app that you can download from the app stores, enables you um, to have an account and be able to do instant payments to your um, friends 24-7. Um, and, uh, and and it's easy easier to use than perhaps the internet banking of today. Um, so so at Dosh, you know we believe that money um, that you should have control of your money. Um, you should have freedom in terms of how you use your money, and it should be transparent. So you might have asked yourself when I make a payment from my bank account and it hasn't arrived at the the, the beneficiary's bank account. You know, where is that money gone? It's going to have gone into the into the ether, right? Um, particularly in the weekends where money money doesn't move. Um, we believe that managing money should be easy and enjoyable. Um, you've probably all grown up with making 
bank transfers, but once you've used the apps offshore, coming back to bank transfers and asking for people for their bank account numbers seems um, incredibly difficult. Um, so I'm sure once you've had the opportunity to experience instant payments um, and uh, mobile number-based payments, um, you'll find that it's a lot easier than um, it is today using banks. Um, and we also believe that New Zealand and a New Zealand company um, should be uh, you know, influencing and bringing the best technology um, in the world to, to New Zealanders as well. Um, and you know, we're very much a New Zealand-based Kiwi-owned and operated company, um, and you're know, really trying to do our best to, to bring the best um, for New Zealanders to make their, their lives easier. Um, so just to briefly, what are the problems that we're, we're actually looking to solve? Um, the ability to open an account without having to go into a branch. You can open an account um, within two minutes in the app. You just bring along your ID and enter the details. Um, the ability to um, pay people instantly 24 by 7. Um, today, bank payments are delayed during the week and don't move at all during the weekend. So with DOS, you can pay and receive money um, easily 24-7. Pay to mobile numbers, not bank account numbers. So I, I can remember my mobile number, but I can't remember my, I still can't remember my bank account number. It's 15, 16 digits. It's probably a few two digits <laughs> too long for my memory. Um, remove the hassle of chasing money. So we've got a request to pay function. So if someone owes you money, you can um, ask them to pay you in the app and send them a, a nice message with some nice emojis. Um, and then you get you get updated with notifications um, when money is, is moved. So we launched this in uh, uh, October last year. It's our um, first version, I suppose, of the app. We've got some really exciting changes coming in the next two to three months, which will really open up how you're able to use the, the money that you've got in your DOSH account from paying your friends 24-7 to be able to pay any merchant in New Zealand, being able to split those costs out at restaurants um, being able to pay anyone whether they're a DOSH user or not. So, so look, we're on a, a path of very um, accelerated um, growth, very accelerated investment and in creating of partnerships as well. Um, so as New Zealand's first digital wallet, um, it's, it's, it's exciting to be involved. And, in, you know, I was thinking about back when I was at university and it's, it's obviously quite a theory based until you get to the practice of, um, you know, being involved in a in a day to day company, and I thought, well, what would be great would be to give you the opportunity to be involved with DOSH and the journey that we're we're on. Um, and so, there's a few ways to do that. You'll see that today we have a uh, download DOSH and earn a free ten dollars in the app. So, if you download DOSH uh, today or before the end of the month. Um, you uh, will be uh, sent ten dollars from our customer service team within twenty four hours, and then you can use that to pay your mates or um, have a go at playing around in the app. Um, secondly, um, join the Dosh Pit, which is a group of Dosh users that are help shaping the direction of New Zealand's first digital wallet. Um, this is probably really quite interesting um, for the people on the call because, as much as you know, we are kind of designing and, and coming up with what we think is best and the next best development. We also look for feedback on that as well. And that's what this group is here to do. And it's also about being kind of connected to the, the DOSH founders and being part of the DOSH journey. So um, I've included my email address there. If that's something you'd like to be interested in, please um, drop me an email and I'll, I'll add you to the group. And as we, um, you know, try and make DOSH the, a market-leading digital financial services company in the world. Uh, sorry, in the world. Let's start with New Zealand before we get to the world. Um, there's an opportunity for you to be involved in that. So um, just drop me a mail. And then the other thing is that we actually got big uh, university-focused um, deals and promotions in the month of March, uh, timed around um, O-Week, um, and there's a chance for you to win big. So um, watch out for those, and if you're part of the DOSH, but you'll get a really close probably um, – eagle eye view of of that um let me just unshare my unshare my screen um so i hope hopefully that was of interest hopefully i've sparked your enthusiasm and, and energy around fintech so i truly believe you've you've come to the most exciting shop in town um not sure how i'm going on um time um strong but if you I, i'm happy to take um any questions yeah 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Shane. That's, you know, great opportunities to, <laughs> to, to participate right in that pitch. Right. So, uh, student and participants, right. You have a chance to join DOS, right. Uh, via DOS pitch. If you, if you want to join DOS, you know, to contribute to, um, to, to DOS, uh, so that, you know, DOS can be, you know, the leading, uh, digital wallet, right, in New Zealand and, and possibly over the world, right, please contact Shane, right, his email over there. Or if you want to get his email, just email me again, forward is to you. And I think I will email Shane right now. <laughs> yeah, I want to join DOT page, right, to see, you know, how I can, you know, contribute to, you know, one of you know the most um, you know growing fast growing um, digital wallet right in the first one in New Zealand in New Zealand that's great right so participants and students if you have any question just type your question under the uh, conversation yes <clears throat> okay yeah. Invest uh, in crypto worldwide. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, good yeah. question. Can we uh, use it to invest in crypto worldwide? So today, um, DOSH is, is domestic. Um, so you can move money around um, in New Zealand. We will be adding the ability to purchase um, uh, online and around the world um, in the coming months um don't want to let the cat out of the bag but there's a big announcement that you'll see in the papers with our part with our, our announcement of our partnership with a global provider um so look out for that in, in two or three weeks time um and then and that is um, on the roadmap to be able to buy so crypto specifically um crypto is a very interesting topic right and so we we um will definitely as the market emerges with crypto further and becomes more adopted, we will um, look to investigate and add in that space. Um, there's always a compliance component with crypto. So you've got to balance your 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 compliance obligations with your offering as well. So that's where the that's specifically where the challenge lies in regards to crypto. Hmm. That's good. Um, there's one question from uh, a student here that um, how do you see government regulation evolving in the fintech industry, especially in New Zealand? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. So there is some regulation today. Uh, there's peer-to-peer -peer lending uh, regulation. There's uh, regulations about being a money service provider, which is you know, organisations that are in the business of moving, moving money off sh offshore, mm -hmm. which is always – I used to be the head of cross-border payments – um, at a bank, and, and that's always an interesting interesting space. Um, in, in terms of digital wallets specifically, there is no licensing regulation at the moment. I expect that will come in time. Most other um, in the jurisdictions have a licensing um, for stored value, so stored value meaning holding money either on a card or, or in an app, um, and, uh, you know, how much can be stored, so, you know, how do you get kind of comfort around where that money is actually held. Um, for DOSH, the money is actually held in a, um, trust, a client trust account at, um, at one of the major banks in New Zealand. So that money is, is very safe and secure, and security and trust is, is critical what we're doing. So, so yeah, I see it. Um, New Zealand's going to be one of the most least regulated. Um, but that's probably because we've got the least number of fintechs as well. So yeah, that'll change as the market grows. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Another question here. Sure. Uh, let me open up the chat. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. what are some sort of DOSH challenges in terms of capturing uh, more customers? <laughs> hey, that's a, that's a really, that's a really good question. So, so look, there's, there's a couple of things I'll point to. One is, you know, we're, we're adding into the app, right? So, you you know, um, we got feedback in, like, the first day. This is not exactly like Venmo in the, in the U.S. I'm like, well, Venmo has been going for eight years, right? So, you know, we are investing, building, developing, et cetera, and as we add in more functionality within the app, then the user proposition grows as well. But actually probably our greatest issue in New Zealand is education. So people don't understand what a digital wallet is. A lot of people think it is crypto, um, people are so used to um, making bank transfers. That's the way they've always done it. So it's kind of like, you know, 
it's trying to teach people about how to stop riding horses and start driving cars. The rest of the world's driving cars. We're still riding horses. Um, and for us, being really actually the only player in the market, that the onus is us. Oh, it's actually falling on us to do the education as well. And, and that's a that's a big task. That takes time. It's about changing behaviours. So the early adoption is really critical. So engaging with our early adopters, helping them bring people on the journey, building advocates is um, is an important part of, of our growth story. And then also just just brand and awareness. And it actually takes quite a lot of investment to um, to really get uh, wide stream um, awareness in, in the market. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Shane. That's that's good. I mean, you know, our MFM student possibly can contribute to you know to in, improve the or increase the awareness of using digital wallet in New Zealand. Yeah, I think so. Yes, we yep. have another question here. Yep, our foreign exchange in or international fund transfer on the riders of uh, Dosh. Yeah, no, that's a good question. Uh, so yes, it is, um, and. We've got some work to do before we get there, um, and we will probably integrate with a provider to kind of help facilitate that. Um, but but if, effectively, it'll be all kind of seamless within, within the app. So yeah, a- absolutely. Um, we've had a few people try and send money um, in DOSH overseas, and we've had to you know, kind of update them that that's not currently available. But yeah, absolutely. And to be honest, yeah, as I said, I used to run that business. It's a great business. It's got challenges, but it's a great business. So you, Really keen to to bring that into Dosh. Um, so I can see the next question. Uh, thank yep. you for your talk. However, should we invest in the crypto market or just trading? How do you think about the contribution to the crypto market to growing uh, economic growth? Um, so I, I in no way would provide any uh, investment advice as part of this. <laughs> I should put a disclaimer as I started. Any uh, investment advice as part of this. Um, so. Uh, you know, you'll need to do your own kind of research um, in terms of investing in crypto. Um, how do I think the um, uh, think the crypto will uh, add to economic growth? Look, I I do believe that you know crypto has a role to play, and um, I think it will continue to um, grow in, in adoption as well. And but these things take will take time. Um, but, you know, I've been involved in it for probably five years and it is quite amazing how far it's come and, and it will, I think, continue to evolve and really add value um, from an econ- economics perspective, just at, at a minimum providing a, a new asset class or even just creating more efficiency in a, in a system which can be a little bit archaic at times in terms mm-hmm. of moving money. Mm, yeah, that's good. That's good. So, um, Shane, I, I love the three trends that you figure out uh, at the beginnings of your talks. Uh, we have the first one, mobile phone, the second one, opening banking, and the first one, real-time payment network. And, um, you know, you say that the opening bank for New Zealand is kind of, you know, at the initial stage. Right. And for the third trend, the uh, real-time payment network, you know, New Zealand is not in the list of 61 countries, right? So what do you think about, you know, the fintech opportunity, job opportunities in New Zealand and also in Australia? Yeah, so that's a really good, really good question because I think you could look at that and you could say, well, the market's not ready or set up for fintech. I mean, our view was we believe that we can we can have a, a strong offering for customers and, and, and move the the, um, the, the the business forward in this current environment and as open banking um, comes in and as new kind of uh, APIs emerge which enable us to be able to do more then we'll adopt those and, and move forward as well so I, I think um, the time is always right you know to, mm. to in New Zealand at this stage uh, it feels like we're early in the market but when you look at it globally we're really late so you, you know Someone's got to step in and help move it forward, and that's what we're we're trying to do, and we're looking for people's support to do that. So I think it's good timing to enter the market. I think there'll be a lot of entrants in the, in the coming year or two. Mm-hmm. Um, and in terms of employment, yeah, I suppose it's difficult in New Zealand because there's not a lot of players, but I think by the time you finish your studies, um, that'll be quite different. So you could actually be timing it perfectly, mm-hmm. which is great. And then there's obviously off, offshore as well. It's very much a global market 
these days and you know there's a real shortfall of people with the right skills and knowledge and if you're able to develop those then you can work offshore you can work onshore for an offshore organization um australia is as i mentioned earlier is really advancing very quickly um in terms of its offering so i think that's a good place to um you know i think you're well placed Okay, thank, thanks so much. Yeah, so I think there's huge opportunities for, you know, fintech in New Zealand as well at, you know, overseas, possibly at this stage. Um, yeah, we have another question from student here, uh, in that what are the challenges faced by a newcomer in the finance, in fintech sectors? Uh, so, so the, the challenges, uh, so that's a, the challenges are, um, are I suppose multiple rights. So first is um, you've got to have the technology. So mm. you've got to or have access to the technology and to be able to bring together a solution. You need funding. Now, how much funding you need. Um, and I really like the fact you've got a, um, a course that covers the, the pitching and fundraising piece. Mm. Having been in a corporate for most of my life, that was new to me. And, I've, and we've just finished our, our second fundraising seed uh, seed round at the moment. So there's a lot of learning to be done there. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, um, so I, and then and then there's that whole kind of compliance piece and manoeuvring around that, right? So um, the fact that I had strong expertise in that space leading into it helped us get through that, whereas that's tripped a lot of people up. So it's so those are the those are the key challenges, but you know, once you've actually got a product in the market, you know, one of those things I read about New Zealand tech is people get a great product, but then they struggle to market it. You know, mm-hmm. and marketing takes marketing expertise and it takes funding as well. So so those are the um I think the key key challenges. I see there's another question there. Um who are Dosh's yep. biggest competitors? Is it Buck? Um what is it Dosh is providing their customers are planning to do to stay competitive. So, um, so yeah, interesting you mentioned um, Buck. So Buck was Westpac owned um, uh, similar kind of payments app that has been paused for various reasons has, and has not come to market. Um, and my understanding is, is it's not coming to market. Um, due to some some compliance reasons, so that's unfortunate actually. Because I, re- you know, we 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 like competition. We'd like to not be the only voice in the market talking mm. about innovation, and to actually have more pl- players in the market helping with that driving conversation would have been useful. So, so that's a bit a bit disappointing. Um, but what, how do we keep ahead of the competitors? We keep investing, like heavily investing in the Dosh proposition. Keep bringing to you new solutions that solve problems and make your lives easier. Um, you know, moving money and managing money shouldn't be hard. It should be fun. It should be enjoyable. It should be satisfying, right? You should be able to move money between you and your friends. You should be able to, you know, the, a lot of the questions that, you know, people have about today's system should be solvable, right? So why is it when I finish my shift and on Saturday night, I can't be instantly paid by my employer? Mm-hmm. Why That's do I get... Why do I get paid fortnightly? Why, why can't I get paid in the weekend? Why doesn't the money move? You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of problems to be solved, and for us, it's about continuing to invest in and to solve those problems. Um, next question: As an entry level in fintech, what are some of the common job roles available in the job market? Um, so, like at any entry level, um, it's about I suppose you start off. Um, doing the doing, um, which is, you know, um, or they can range depending on what, what the organisation is. There can be um, tech development, kind of software tech development roles. Um, it can be um, you know, early product uh, management and analysis, early um, marketing roles. Um, you know, we have people who manage so- social media, people who um, manage creative, et cetera. There's, that's quite a big part of the, of, of the whole proposition. Um, or you get involved in compliance early. I mean, there's always a shortfall in compliance roles. Um, so if that's something that interests you, then, you know, I think compliance is a good space as well. Yeah. So we have, well, you know, um, we have time for one more question. So that's good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Last, last one. It's yeah. much more similar in terms of business model to PayPal or Afterpay. So um, in terms of business model, it's probably most similar to Venmo. So um, you may or may not have heard uh, of Venmo. They're one of two big digital wallet um, apps in uh, the US. They've got more than 70 million customers. They have more customers than JP Morgan. 
So they've been really successful and they are just peer-to-peer payments and then they've added in more ability, um, such as the ability to, you know, to, to pay by a card. There's a business proposition in there as, as well. So um, not so much after pay. After pay is more buy now, pay later. I wouldn't rule out us doing buy now, pay later, but I also think that market's quite saturated. So, you know, it's something that we'll, we'll look at in, in due course. Mm, that's great. That's great. So, um, Shane, could you please share the uh, your emails, share the screen so that uh, we can see your email over there if anyone have interest in dot .pit. And, I can probably put yeah. it. Should I put it in the chat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that um, could be good. That could be good. So, that's my, that's yeah. my check on. Okay, here it is. Um, So students and participants, Rana, if you have any, you know, questions, you can email me after this uh, presentation. And if you have, um, you know, uh, interest in DOSH and also um, want to join DOSH Pitch, right, just email Shane directly. That's good because thank you very much, Shane, for this opportunity uh, for our students. And thank you so much for your talk today. It's, it's quite informative. And I think we um, get, you know, a lot of information from your talk and, and you know, student in Inspire uh, about studying fintech, uh, especially at Lincoln University here. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, once again, you'll have a good day. And thank you very much. Yeah, yeah we'll no. be in touch later. <laughs> Will do. No, thank you very much for the opportunity and, and thanks to the, the students for the engaging questions. I thought it was great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you.